Hi, my name is Michael Watson and I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual from start to finish. Today we're doing chapter 9, which is tempo and warping audio clips. So I'm just going to jump right in. So unlike music stored on a tape, the music in live remains elastic at all times. So that means we can stretch things and make them longer and shorter. And so live is capable of time warping samples while streaming them from the disc so as to synchronize them to the current live set's tempo. You can find the tempo at the top left here. This time stretching happens without affecting the pitch. You can change the pitch independently as well. Mixing and matching audio from different origins is therefore extremely easy and is really useful if you want to do remixes or take some kind of audio sample and fit it to your current project. So if that all sounds interesting to you, you're going to be learning which tools to use to do that and where you can find these tools in Ableton Live. So let's first of all talk about setting the tempo. At the top left here you see this box and you can click and move your mouse up and down to change the values like that. Or you can actually just input the number with your keyboard, which I recommend because you can get better precision that way. So you can also map your tempo automation to a key. So if you click on this key button on the right here, you can then tap on a key on your MIDI controller and assign it to this tempo. Or you can also hit the MIDI button and do a similar thing. You can also tap in the tempo, so say for instance you know that you want your song to be a specific tempo and you don't know what tempo that is, you can go da 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 and then here you see it's 71.445, so that's also a cool useful tool. Another thing you can do over here is you can nudge the tempo, so if you see these two buttons they kind of look like they're a mirror image from each other and they've got lines of varying lengths. I'll tell you in which scenario you might want to use these nudge buttons. So if you find yourself in situations in which you need to adjust to musical sources that aren't locked to one tempo, for instance, like say you're working with a live musician and they sometimes don't stick to a tempo like a robot, which is completely reasonable, then sometimes you're going to have to nudge the tempo forward or back a bit. As you see, when I hit these buttons, it doesn't actually change the tempo number here. But what they do is they temporarily speed up or slow down live's playback to match what you hear. So if you listen closely, you could probably hear that it kind of skips just a little bit. I was overdoing it by hitting nudge a lot of times, but if you notice that your live performer is going a little bit faster or slower, you can just hit nudge once and hopefully you've matched tempo again. And then the rest of your project will continue as per your normal BPM. Okay, now let's talk about time warping samples, which is probably why you're here. In my opinion, this is one of the most fun things in Ableton Live. I really appreciate the maths that goes behind warping all these samples. And I think they've done it fairly well. Well, at least in my experience, it's better than most DAWs I've worked with. So if you click on a clip over here, I've already clicked on this drum loop. You see this sample box appear on the bottom left. And the sample box is a subsection of the clip view, which is this whole view down here. And in your sample box, you can see a column that says warp at the top. And then it's got a bunch of settings underneath. You can disable warp by clicking it and making it go gray. And then some of the settings disappear. Essentially, you've disabled anything warp related, but let's just hit that because this is about warping. So this is the most important switch in this box because it is switching warping on and off. When warp is switched off, live plays this sample at its original normal tempo, irrespective of this current tempo. So let's have a listen. Let's put on the metronome so that you can hear what I mean. The metronome is this button here with these two circles, one dark and one light. As you can hear, it's not in sync, these drums, with the metronome. If I hit warp... <laughs> so as you can hear, it does warp the sample to fit into the tempo, and it's quite a drastic effect because it has to speed up the drums dramatically. But you can change the extent to which this warping applies to the sample by changing all these warp markers here, and that's what I'm going to be talking about next. Just before I do that, I want to just tell you about the auto warping preference. So if you hit command comma and you open up your preferences here, if you go to record warp launch, you have a setting here called auto warp long samples. And if this is on, then if you drag in a long sample into Ableton Live, it'll automatically warp it to your set tempo. If you don't want Ableton Live to automatically warp things, you can just make sure this is off. Any other of your warp and fade preferences will be found over here. Okay, so back to warp markers. Think of the sample as a rubber band that you want to pin to a musical time ruler. So in live, these kind of pins are called warp markers. You can see here's a yellow one over here, and 
here's the other warp marker on the end and the sample is like a rubber band that's been placed on these two pins and if you stretch these warp markers the sample stretches just like a rubber band would and likewise if you make it smaller it also compresses. If you don't see these warp markers just double click on your sample as you can see as I've double clicked it's created a new warp marker. You can create as many as you want. If you don't want them anymore you can just hit delete you select the one you want to delete and hit delete. Another thing I want to tell you about warp markers is that when you load a clip, Live automatically analyzes it. And one of the main things it analyzes is where the transients lie. So transients are these peaks over here. It's basically where a note starts. They are very obvious in drum patterns because drums are hits. So there is a drastic contrast between silence and all of a sudden the hit of a drum. And if you look above these transients, you can see these little like arrows. There's one, there's one, there's one. And these are essentially suggested points for warp markers. You can hover your mouse on it and you can see like a gray wannabe warp marker appears. You can then drag it around and change your drum sample to move this transient. See how everything moves with it. What if you want to anchor something down? Well, that's when you need another warp marker. So I've got two enabled there. Now I'm only warping the section between these two warp markers, just as though this sample here were a rubber band. In this way, you can edit pre-existing drum loops that you've got in Ableton Live and make them sound really unique and original without having to spend lots of money on other drum loops. Or find lots of free packs online that could take very long to download, especially if you're from a country like me with really crappy internet. Although I really am grateful that we do have internet. You can also select a range of time that you want to have warped. So if you select a range, you go to the top and you go create, insert warp markers, It'll insert warp markers at all the different transients here. And if that's too many, you can just click on them and delete them again. Typically live is pretty decent, or at least they say, at putting warp markers on the transients. But if you didn't like where they placed it, you can also manually put them in the right place by deleting it and then actually placing the cursor where you want it to be. I'm just going to zoom in. Say I want it right over there. Go create insert warp marker or command I is the shortcut. If I save the live set now, these warp markers will be saved. But what if I know that every time I use this drum loop, I'm going to want to have the warp markers in the same space. I don't want to open the same live set and then drag the clip out, etc, etc. That takes way too long. So if you want to save these warp markers with the actual clip, you can hit the clip save button over here. And this will save the clip's default settings with the sample file. If you save these markers as your default clip, then if you use this clip in another set, your preferences, so the ones I showed you over here with the auto warping, won't have an effect because the fact that you save these overrides the auto warping properties. Okay, so let's talk about a few more practical tips for warping samples. Okay, so if you want to warp the sample, just make it half the length or double the length, instead of dragging in warp markers and fiddling around with that, you can use these two buttons over here. You've got your colon 2 and your star 2, and this would half the time. So it makes it a lot smaller, and this would double the time, which stretches it by two. Okay, so save one since we have a loop that's got a piece of silence at the beginning. And so when you play it, it's going to first play the silence while the song continues and then start, which means that the drums are going to be late and out of sync with the rest of the song. A quick way you can correct this is that you just place a warp marker at the beginning here. So double click. I don't want that. Let's delete that. I'm just dragging this so that it lines up. So see, it doesn't actually warp the sample. It pulls the whole sample back to be in the right spot. Okay, what about this example? So let's see, here's a little bit of silence. So like I just told you, you can place a warp marker over there. Delete that one and pull the whole sample back. So now it's starting in the right place. But now the weird thing about this one is that it's an odd length. So just pull the whole thing to the beginning so we can better see it. All right, we're starting at one and see it ends here at like... 3.25, which doesn't neatly fit into any kind of 4 4 time, which is what we're currently in. As you see, top here, that's the meter we're in. So you can also fix this quite simply using warp markers. Typically, Live just assumes that this loop is 8 bars long or 4 or something like that to fit in neatly. And so it's going to try and play it to match it. But to play this back correctly, you're going to have to put a warp marker over here, which turns this into a 2 bar loop which makes it a lot better to play back. And so if you warp it, it'll actually warp this repeatable section. See, 
<laughs> if I would have put the warp marker at the, the true end of this loop, and I would have warped it to something like two bars so it all fits, it wouldn't sound really great. Let's put the metronome on so you can hear. So the tempo fits, but at the end it kind of adds this like hiccupy feeling. Let's do that again. And that could be very cool if used intentionally, don't get me wrong. But typically for your normal music production purposes, this might cause problems. So if we just get it back to normal, take that warp marker and put it at the end of here. And now let's warp it so that this middle section fits into this bar quite nicely. Play it back with the metronome. You can hear that this section fits perfectly and this is like an afterthought that starts in the next bar. Another cool thing that you can do with warp markers is simply to just have fun. So go crazy, like put random warp markers in, make things short, make things long. But anyway, so just go mad and sometimes it's good to just forget about the rules. But these are some of the things you can do with warp markers. And what I did there was called manipulating grooves. Another thing you can do with warping is you can literally drag in a whole song. Okay, so it's just analyzing the sample. It's going to take a little bit of time. What I've done here is I've got a song and I want it to be slower. Remember, I've got auto warp turned on, which means if I change the tempo, live is automatically going to change the tempo of this. So let's make it a lot faster. If you listen closely, you can hear some weird things like bow wee ah wee. These are called artifacts. And to make sure that you use the right warping algorithm for your right loop, you've got all these different options here, which I'm going to be talking about in the next video. So because this is a long piece of music with both long notes and beats and all sorts of things, I'm going to be using something called complex pro mode. Actually, that's probably a bit overkill. I'm just going to use complex mode and it'll sound very different. Do you notice some of the artifacts are missing? That's purely because of the maths that's being used to process this, which is a very different set of mathematical equations that's used to do the speeds algorithm, which is better for drums. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to go into that in the next video. Just a little note of warning. Sometimes when you use this auto warp algorithm, Ableton Live will guess the tempo correctly, but it'll get the downbeat wrong, which means that the song is going to start off sync. So to remedy this, like I explained earlier, you can change this first warp marker and put it in the right place. But if you hold shift while you drag this, see that you can actually get more precision. So it won't necessarily snap to the grid. So if Ableton Live literally started the song like a split second too late and it's not an eighth note or a quarter note or something that fits into your grid, then use shift and drag it. And when you're doing this, it's really important to be precise. You want to really zoom in and make sure this warp marker is right at the beginning. So I'm just going to delete this one, put one in there. I want it to be precise. If you are moving samples around like that, you might also find it's useful to select all your all your warp markers. So instead of me just dragging this section around, I might actually want to move the whole sample. So select everything and then move it around. If you look at the context menu, you've also got different options here. You've got warp from here, warp from here, start it, blah, 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 blah. So warp from here runs the auto warp algorithm on the material to the right of the selected marker. So when I want to use this warp from here command with a specific BPM, what I'm trying to do is tap the tempo to the specific clip that I want to warp so that the tempo matches the clip. And then I want to re-warp the clip to the tempo that I set. So let me show you. So I'm going to warp from here. I'm going to start at this tempo, which is completely the wrong tempo, but that's totally fine. And I'm going to disable warp. What I'm going to do now is play this clip and while I'm listening to this clip, I'm going to tap in the correct tempo and then enable warp again. So two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Oh wow, I got that right. Okay, so that's about 60 BPM. So I'm going to stop it. I've got the tempo, which I've tapped according to the sample, and I'm going to warp it again. And essentially I'm warping this sample to that tempo. Now that might seem weird. Why didn't I just warp it from the start? Well, why didn't you? I don't know. 
this scenario would be good if you've got say like a classical orchestral piece where the tempo varies a little bit but you want it to be in strict time so let's say for instance like a piano ballad that is fairly slow sometimes there's a bit of rubato and the piano player takes some liberty and plays a section slower or faster which means if you want to add a beat to it and turn it into some kind of dubstep remix it's going to take a very long time to warp it yourself and auto warp isn't going to do it justice in that particular case you'd want to use this setting and on top of that you've also got all these cool warp markers which you can adjust so moving on okay there's also a warp from here straight which tells auto warp that this is a clip with no tempo variations so straight tempo literally means that each beat is equal value so like one two three four which is commonly used in jazz or other styles of music where the first and the third beat are longer than the second and fourth and then warp this BPM from here. We'll also set a single warp marker. Let's go back to our original drum sample here. If I go... That essentially puts a warp marker in here and then from this point onwards it's going to warp this loop to match the tempo. You can also have more than one clip and select both of them at the same time. And so you can have multi-warping features here. The trick is they need to be the same length. So let's actually just put the same clip over here. Um, Clicking, holding Alt and dragging it down, which duplicates it. Then I select both of them and now you see that I've got this cool little pattern over here. Showing me that I've got more than one selected. And now I can actually just place warp mar markers at different positions. And if I select a single one, you can see that the warp markers are there and they're also on the other one. So this is really useful if, say, you've tracked a band, you've got your drums, your vocals, your guitar, and you want to put warp markers in all the same places of all the same clips. Make sure that they're all the same length. This is very important. And once they are, you can select all of them and put the warp markers in. And this is called multi-clip warping. So two more little tips on this. You can also quantize your audio here. So it's possible to snap kind of all these transients to a grid by using the quantize command. So to do this, you've got to hit the background of the sample editor. So this empty space here. Go to edit. And use the quantize command. Or you can hit command U. It was a small change, but these transients all snapped to a grid, and as a result, you've also got all the individual warp markers. Compare that to what it was. So it's got a slight groove to it. What's cool about this as well is you've really got all these warp markers, so you can now begin to fiddle and make some really cool little fun things. But I won't bore you with that. You can also adjust the quantization parameters, and you get this from the edit menu. So you go edit, quantize settings. And I've quantized it to the current grid and at 100%. But if you don't want things to snap 100% like a robot, you can also make things smaller. And just play around and see what sounds good to your ear. Now I'm going to be telling you about the master and the slave switch, which you can use if you have a particular sample and you want the rest of your Ableton Live set to match the tempo of that particular sample. Okay, so the master slave switch is also here in your sample box. Underneath warp you see a slave button which isn't there in session view. So you need to be in arrangement view to see it. When you set this clip as master, so you have to hit slave to make it turn it to master. Then this tempo field over here becomes disabled because all the tempo control is handed over to this master clip. So live will analyze all these transients and work out the tempo from this clip and use that tempo to determine the tempo for the whole live set. So note, if I disable this, so, so if I turn this into a slave again, and if I change the tempo to something different, so it's already different, it'll sound different. Let's go like uh, 50. As soon as I change this to slave, the tempo changes again. Now what happens if you delete a master clip? Dun, dun, dun. Nothing too drastic. Live is just going to restore tempo to the last thing I set it at, which was 50. And that's it for warping guys. In the next video I'm going to be explaining all these different algorithms to you, which to use in which scenario to get the best possible audio results in your warping. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd love to help you and have fun.